Morning, Fraser. Monday morning. Got to go move a couple of doors for uh, for Craig this morning. Allie wants an egg McMuffin, so I'm going to go get her an egg McMuffin. Get on that, man. I don't know what... Well, yeah, we're going to get this thing out of here today. I'm, I'm going to fix this, put the seat in place, and uh, that will be that. Yeah, I mean, there's other stuff to do to it, but that'll be what we need to do today. Um, and I do have a new switch word for it, so uh, I'll be putting that in when it gets here. Other than that, we'll see what goes on for the day, man. Yeah. All right, so I made Chas sit in the, uh, in the chair last night. In the, uh, I put the chair in just loose because it's not attached. Um, and we figured out where I need to move this to. So I've just got to take the pins out and move it again. And then we should be, uh, we should be good. So I'm going to work on that. So I've had them in and out a couple times, so they're actually loose enough that I can do this with them now. And just take it out. Which is much nicer than messing around with it. So I moved it, the marks didn't help, or I thought they were going to help, but they, you know, whatever. But I've moved it back a bit, which I think is enough, but I don't know that it's the switch. It seems to be, the problem seems to be in here, right? So I can move this with the switch, but as soon as these start bending, that's my problem. So actually, it's not so much that as it is this because that's putting extra pressure because this is not sliding. I cleared off a bit of a workbench so what I gotta do is take these off somehow. Gotta take that off. So these are not split ring pliers, they're just a ring to hold it together. So that's going there. There's a very tiny screw. Okay. All right, so Allie found the video as to how to get into these things. I didn't want to wreck it because I didn't know how it was attached in there, but it's just attached in there on the square. So uh, that's kind of nice. I'm going to put this back on so that I don't cause damage up there. If I don't need to take that apart, I won't. So ultimately, that's all it is, is right there. So it comes out of both sides, boom and boom. That is now movable. Is it fully movable? It's movable more than I can get that in now. And that is a six mil. Okay, so this is a little bit hillbilly, but you know what? It's working. So I got that wedged up and in. It's this little tiny little screw that I got or bolt that I gotta get out of there. So if I can press that, pry that up a little bit and twist this, it seems to allow me to access it. I don't care if it's a little bit at a time, if I can get it out. Getting it back in might be a bit of a, a challenge. And waiting and seeing and finding out the surprise of what springs are all in there might also be a, a wonderful surprise. I got it out far enough past that thing that I can start getting at it now. And it is a quarter inch, it's a quarter inch drive. Quarter inch drive, it's a quarter inch uh, wrench. Keith brought up a good point when I was talking to Keith. He's like, yeah, I don't think that there's enough room for that screw to come out. And you know what, he's right. <laughs> I realized that when I was talking to him, but still. Bend it just a little more, I got it out. Got it out. That doesn't make any sense. 
sense. There shouldn't be anything in there stopping it from turning. I can get this off and this out of it, but I can't. There's no way to get that. Let's say can't. Don't tell me can't. Oh, what happened there? That moved a little bit. Just need it just a little much. Right there. Right there. This unit fits into here like this. This unit, so this goes in sideways. This spins, well actually the motor spins this, which spins this, and it attaches to this. So somehow, some way, something's not moving. I'm not sure what. But we will figure that out. This spins no problem. This spins no problem. Or relatively no problem. I'm going to do one side at a time so that I don't screw it up and get the wrong pieces and the wrong sides and all that sort of stuff. But nothing that should be causing that to stop by any means. So now I should be able to uh, move that physically, forcefully. Once I get that going, then that should move everything else smoothly. You're going to clean the daylights out of that. I'm going to spray it with WD-40, clean it out, and get it moving, and that's my that's my goal right now. So I'm going to turn you off for a bit because it's going to get messy. All right, so I've cleaned up the one side, cleaned it up, scraped it out, cleaned it out again, greased it with some white lithium grease. WD-40 white lithium grease. Yeah, that makes sense. The grease. See if I can make this thing work. This goes in here. So this way. Kidding me? Oh, I see. Okay, okay.
Now I just got to do the other side. Now that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Improvise, adapt, and overcome. Get the job done. Didn't have enough strength to get in there with my hands to uh, turn the wrench because it's got to be turned on edge like that. So I just threw it in the threw it in the vice grip. Should be fine now. There we go. side off so now I am going to clean that out like I did before with the WD-40 and stuff grease it up and we'll be good to go okay I got the second side cleaned up lithium greased up I'm gonna try and put it back together and hopefully she works Well, crud, I thought you were on. Uh, I got those back. I got this one back in. I got these back in. This was a bit of a challenge. But again, they just they just twisted out and they just kind of had to bend. I basically just took it and bent it that way, forcing the little pin back inside there. And uh, that's what we're dealing with. So, And the reason this didn't go is because it wasn't charging. Uh, so I'm going to put this back in. And then we're going to see if it works. So I'm just going to set it in place. So I'll be right back. All right. So bad news. It still doesn't work. Might be the switch. Could be the motor. Don't know. Don't know. Either way, I can still adjust it by hand now that I know how those things work. And it's all greased up and ready to go if we can fix it. But that's about it. I've left these two things here out of the motor. But they're still in the drive on both sides. So I can attach the drill to that, and that will uh, be able to adjust after we adjust each side separately. But it will adjust the uh, the seat. So. Okay, that's back on. Much heavier now. I hurt my hand again. I might need you in here with the in the back seat with the uh, light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just shine the light down in here? All right, so I have this adjustable. So I can adjust it if I need to. It's manually adjustable, but it is adjustable. I've got to cut that back to a reasonable level. Oh, so I've got to cut this bolt down. So I've got an M5 by 8 uh, die, which I'm wrapping up, which basically creates the same thread pattern. I use the tap, which is the opposite side of this, to, uh, to tap some threads into that earlier. Not earlier, like on a previous video. do is I've got to shorten this and I've got to cut this uh, this bolt down in order to cut it you usually want to use a, a nut if you can or anything this will work this will actually be perfect because once I cut it off it'll destroy the threads on the end but because I'm cutting it off and I have this die on there it will straighten out the threads perfectly 
That was for you, Keith. <laughs> Had to get at least one in there with the grinder. Perfect. It's nice and smooth. Very happy with the die and the tap there. Seat's back in place. It's pretty much adjusted. We've got to uh, maybe do some minor adjustments, but I'll be able to access that with these wonderful things right here. Right here on each side. Right there and there. Hey, Freeze. Hope things are going well today, bud. Uh, it was a little bit overcast today, so it was a little bit cooler, but it wasn't bad. I liked it. For me, it was perfect. Hope uh, it was decent weather out there. Hope you guys get out to the lake today. Yeah. Today, man, oh man, I uh, oh I went and I ran and I did those. Uh, just moved a couple doors. I actually Greg grabbed uh, Cody uh, from the church and moved those doors because it was actually more than just two. It was like twelve of them or something silly like that. So and they're like heavy, heavy, solid core doors. So so I moved those. Then I went and grabbed Allie her uh, sausage muffin, and we actually went down to, uh, and I grabbed a, a junior chicken patty, or a sausage patty kind of thing, and uh, went down to the uh, boat launch and just sat there and, and watched for a little bit. It was, uh, I don't know, it was probably 10.30 by the time we were doing that, 11 o'clock maybe, and uh, some guys were coming in and stuff, guys were going out, extreme low tide at uh, 1.30 today, I think. So there was a bunch coming in and going, and, and it turns out James and, and uh, Stewie were coming in on a boat there. So when we were finished and we were leaving, I was heading out, and we went down that way to say hi to them kind of thing. They did well. They got a couple of coho and uh, a couple of chinooks, so we're going to go back out tonight for some more coho. Um, yeah, so they did well, and they said they're, they're thinking it was going to be flat calm tonight, and it looks calm now, but uh, by 7 o'clock, supposed to be blowing... 16, 17, and then uh, by 8 o'clock, it's supposed to be going like 25. So I don't know about the flat calm thing. We'll see. So anyway, we we took it. We, we drove down the other end of the parking lot at that point and went into the uh, the Warfinger's office, and I checked on uh, my name because my name's on the list for uh, for a slip in the marina, right? And back in April, I checked. I was like number nine on the list. Kind of thing. So I went in and I chatted today. And a uh, guy looked, and he says, okay, so you're on this list, where, what's are you there? And I saw my name, so I said, I'm right there, that's me, you're looking great. And uh, he looks it up, he's like, okay, so this guy, no, this guy said no, this guy says no, this guy says no, so one, two, three, you're like number four on the list. I'm like, I'm number four on the list! This is like Christmas. <laughs> so, basically, if anybody else says no, and there's any spots that come open, I mean, you know, there's still a possibility I can get in this year, who knows? But not likely. Likelihood is it'll be next year. But that's okay. Number four on the list. That's awesome. I'll take that. Uh, yeah, then we came home and I started working on that seat because I wanted to get the seat done. And I was just going to put it back in and kind of set it up in place where I thought it was going to go. But the marks I had had placed that I'd made on the, on the seat didn't actually help me adjust it. Um... And then I just got annoyed, and I was like, no, like, let's just do it right. So I took it off, I ripped the whole thing apart, cleaned it all up, made sure everything was moving, put it all back together, and, uh, yeah, sure enough, it still doesn't work. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's, it, when there's no pressure on the motor, the motor works. 
But when there's any kind of pressure on there, it doesn't work. So I don't think I found the the, uh, the new switch. I'm going to replace the switch when it gets here. But I don't think it's the switch. I think it's the motor. I think the motor is just old and tired. And I think if I can get a new motor, it'll be good. But it's a it's like a setup. Well, you saw it. It's a setup of triple motors, right? Like one, two, three. One for the up, down, one for the this, and then one for the forward and back and stuff. And so I think I found one, but there's like a hundred and some odd bucks, right? So uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll keep looking, but we'll see. I don't know. I, I don't remember whether it was on Amazon or whether it was on eBay or something like that. So it always catches me out a little bit, depending on where you're ordering it from. But it, it works. I've got those. So those, they're like old bike cables. I don't know if you remember old bicycle cables. For, that's what it was. It's old bicycle speedometer cables type things, right? They've got that cable that goes through, and it's basically just a little square on the end. And, and they twist, right? And they twist going down to whatever it is you're doing. It could have been for a bike light. It could have been for anything. Whatever's, you know, you're, you're needing that, that twisting motion to give you some sort of display of some sort. Same thing. They're just really, really short. So they work. They work now with the drill. So I've got them still out of the motor and ac ac accessible, accessible by uh, from under the seat. So when I get chaps to sit in there, everything's solid up. It's back in place. Everything's good. I'm gonna get her to sit in there, see where she wants it. Just point it forward a little bit back, wherever it is, and we'll adjust the forwardness, and then it's done, and it'll be fine. When we get the new uh, the new switch, I can put that in with no problem. If that helps, great. If it doesn't, it's the motors. And then at that point, we look at it in motor. But I'm not going to jump to the gun on that one. We'll wait and see. We're in Psalm 22. It's a bit of a long one. A Psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they said. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. This is all prophecy of Christ on the cross. Christ said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he was on the cross, because Jesus had to become sin for us, and God the Father had to turn his eyes from Christ. And Christ on the cross, he was like, well, we'll get more into it, but when people were walking by, he was scorned, he was, he was despised by everybody, and everybody was mocking him, except his disciples and such, right? And they were saying to him, in the New Testament, it's just they were saying, you know, let the Lord, you trust in the, law, in the Lord, let the, uh, you know, let's see if the Lord delivers them. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, the strong bulls of Bashan encircle me, roaring lions that tear their prey. They open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. Again, speaking about Christ on the cross. That's exactly how it would have been on the cross when he was on the cross being crucified. He wouldn't have been able to support his weight. All of, everything would be out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. He died on the cross. And they're going to be laying him in the, in the tomb. Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Again, the cross. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Again, it says that in the New Testament that the Roman guards cast lots for Jesus' garments because it was like a perfect garment, like it was a one-piece thing, right? Normally, they rip them up and tear them up, but they said, no, let's not do that. It's so nice. This was prophesied like 1,500 years before Christ. Just saying. 
But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of lions. Save me from the horns of, wi horns of wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. The afflicted one is Jesus. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise. In the great assembly, before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn that you and me. He has done it. Christ has done it. He's done it for us. We could not do it. People talk all the time, you know, you see different things, videos, whatever, people complaining about God, you know, and how could, how could a righteous God allow this and allow that and allow that? Again, Adam and Eve, mankind, we sinned. We chose to not obey God. We chose to do that. God honored our free will. But even though God honors our free will to let us sin, He also made a way because He was the only way that could be made to be able to reconcile us to God. He did that. He didn't have to do that, but He did do that because that was the only way we could be with Him. And we still have that free will choice. Not God or God. Death or life. Death in this earth means nothing. Death to our physical bodies is the death of our spirit, which is separation from Christ. Separation from God. For eternity. Suffering. I'm looking forward to being with Christ. And I hope you make that decision someday, Fraser. I really do. Because I want to see you there in heaven when you get there. When I get there. Love you, buddy. God loves you very much, man. Miss you. Look forward to seeing you. And I will post more.